thank you all. Thanks, uh, thanks for coming in. I know it's uh, it's afternoonish. It's just the time when all of us get a little tired. So I'll try to keep this brief. I know it was a 45-minute session, but I will try to keep it as brief as possible. My name is Gokul Gopalakrishnan, and I, if I can live up to 10% of how she actually portrayed my life, I would be doing justice to myself. But I don't think I deserve any of the, uh, you know, the the brilliant stuff she said. I'm, um, I am a technocrat doing this uh, right now for the last 20 years on the customer experience, customer service side of it. And uh, looking forward to interact with you. Our booth is outside, so we should be talking more. Uh, Nikhil, are we good to go? Yeah. So who is Unifor, right? Uh, Unifor, Unifor is a conversational automation organization, and I'll talk about what that means because it's a very differentiated space, a very unique space where Unifor is on. Uh, we are incubated out of IIT Chennai almost 14 years ago, reaching now 15 years. Uh, started off doing uh, turnkey solutions and then came into the speed solutions bit uh, last seven, eight years. Right now, a $2.5 billion valued company. At our last series, which we had uh, exactly a year ago, we got $400 million of funding that took us to a unicorn stage, $2.5 billion. We are in the business of conversations. And what that means, how do we automate all that, is something that you're going to see uh, very shortly. And what I will be talking about is in two parts, right? One is what Unifor does, our platform approach, our products, etc. But more importantly, how does that, from a solution pack perspective, uh, is relevant from a collections and maybe outbound renewal sales, etc. as well. So I'll kind of talk about that in two different pieces. I do have a demo at the end, uh, cross fingers. I don't know how it will work, but we do have something for you at the end as well. All right. Uh, so as I said, the global company right now, I run the Asia pack, uh, Asia pack markets for Unifor all the way from ANZ to Middle East to uh, India to Southeast Asia, Philippines. All of them roll into me. And uh, uh, we are our headquarters right now is Palo Alto in, in the Bay Area. Global customers, as I said, um, uh, $2.5 billion uh, company, and we'll talk about the verticals that we are engaged in. Now, what do we do? This is the most critical piece of it, right? So we are a platform approach company with three products. On the leftmost that you see is self-serve, which is a conversational AI platform. The second, what you see, is our assist, a real-time analytics solution. And finally, analyze, which is the historical speech analytics piece of it. Now, when a customer interacts with a contact center, right, a, a customer, end customer is experiencing uh, any kind of interactions with a consumer, it is always the primary piece is through a contact center, whether it is inbound or outbound. And our solutions are predominantly in the contact center uh, domain. So on the leftmost, what you see, the first point of contact, whether again it is inbound or outbound or multi-channel, omni-channel, whichever one you look at it, multimodal, it is the conversational AI or the self-service piece of it, which is what we call the you self serve traditional voice bot. Again, as I said, we are a speech-first company. Of course, we do text as part of it, but we are a speech-first company. So a conversational AI that interacts with the customer, uh, certain requests, certain uh, queries that are very simple in nature or automated on the self-serve part of it. And then you pass it on for the complex queries to an agent. Now, I know a lot of the, uh, with the chat GPT, the open AI that has come in, there's a lot of buzz around what does the conversational AI do versus how is it relevant in a contact center world. And we'll talk about it. It's a much larger conversation. Happy to chat with any of you at our booth around it. But the part of it is these are more structured in nature, right? The queries, the calls, the, the communication, the interactions that happen in a contact center are much more structured compared to what you would do in an open AI kind of a situation, right? So from that perspective, self-serve conversational AI is your uh, you self-serve that you see on the leftmost side. Now some of the complex conversations get transferred from the self-serve to the assist side of it, to the agent, which is where you assist comes into play. You assist while the customer is talking to the agent, again both inbound, outbound, whether it's collections, whether it's sales, whether it's customer service, does not matter. This 
provides insights to the agent real time on what is being said by the customer, how it's being said, which is the tonal uh, part of it, and provides alerts to the agent on how that conversation needs to move. That's your assist functionality, real time assist, which is both during the call, but then more importantly, after the call, today contact center agents do what's called after call work, right? Where they do summaries, where they, uh, you know, take down notes, then they go ahead and uh, uh, have dispositions that they enter into the client CRM. All those things are done as part of after call work. But since Unifor is now listening in real time on those conversations between the agent and the customer, this is automatically summarized. The R tool, R software actually summarizes everything, disposes it off, and saves almost close to 80% of what a typical agent does during an after call work. That's the USS function. That is our hero product. That is the clear differentiator that we have in the market. And then the final one is you analyze, which is the historical speech analytics, which is once the call is done, you pull out the recordings, you go ahead and do the simplest use case, which is agent performance, which is the quality function. So you kind of go and automate the entire quality function, which is the AQM part of it, which is the easiest side of it. But more importantly, now since you are listening to both sides of the conversation, you are taking the customer side of the conversation as well and doing what's called the voice of the customer to build multiple propensity models. In this conference, the relevance, of course, is the collection side of it. So is there a promise to pay? Is it uh, a commitment to pay? How much is going to be paid? When is it going to be paid? All of those conversations, you can build the propensity models accordingly. That's the you analyze side of it. So self-serve, which is the conversational AI side, you assist, which is the real-time uh, analytics while the agent is talking to the customer, and finally you analyze, which is our historical analytics. And all three of them are on a single platform called X, which you see right there. Now all these use cases that you see, whether it is onboarding, um, acquisitions, which is in a, in a pre-sales kind of a situation, customer service, or collections, dispute management, our products span across all of these functions. Like I said, the important part is we follow what's called a platform approach. So all these products are on a single platform, which is learning. Now what that means is, now let's say that you get through you analyze, which is a historical speech analytics, you get the uh, recordings historically, what the customer has talked to the agent. The platform starts learning from that on what kind of calls are coming in, what is the intent of that call, which you can then take and automate it on the self-serve side. Because self-serve, you don't want to be wasting time to figure out who the customer is, you don't want to figure out um, very mundane things that can be automated. You are now doing that on self-serve right away, and that intelligence is learned from what the platform has learned on the analyze side. What it has learned on the self-serve side, as in what kind of intents are coming in, is fed back into assist, which is the real-time part which I talked about. And now the agent knows that these are the kind of calls that are coming in, and hence they would be able to handle it in a different way. So the platform approach is a unique, again, differentiator for what Unifor does, is because of the anal analyze part where we know how the uh, calls are historically done, the intent recognitions through our uh, self-serve and others, and then finally, motion, detection, language, ASR are all part of the platform. Now what we have done in the last two weeks, and some of you may be aware of it, is we have acquired two companies in the last uh, uh, fortnight, which is one of them is a recording company, um, a voice recording company called Redbox based out of UK. Now what that gives us is the audio streams to record. We, don't, we are not now dependent, we are not now anymore dependent on what is the audio available, recorders available, call loggers available in the, in, the bar, in the customer premises. We don't care about that anymore. We use our own recorder number one. And then the second one, which is going to be a unique, extremely unique differentiation, as I said, is our tonal side of it. So no more is decision making going to happen based on what is said, which is the transcription, but how it is going to be said, because emotion is actually based on not just what is being said, but how it's being said as well, correct? So the huge, huge differentiation, which we bought another company in France that gives us this capability. Now let's look at how is this relevant from a collections perspective across the board, the products that we talked about. 
you look at it, there's the early stage collections and then there's the late stage collections. And across the segmentation of agents where they belong to on, on the journey that they have with a customer. This is standard, this is the process, this is how typically most of the collection process itself works. What that takes us is, how does our products relevant to this journey that I talked about from an early to a late collection perspective? And each product, again, we are not a, um, we are not of the opinion that a bot or automation alone will solve a problem. It is always for us a bot plus human approach everywhere, whether it is customer service, whether it is sales, it is acquisition, collections, it is always, always a bot plus human uh, approach. And how does each one of them come in, right? So you look at analytics, that's, the, as I said, the most base side of it. How did the callers call in so far, and how have they been interacting in the past with the enterprise, right? That is what, that's the that intelligence you get from analytics, where you detect, uh, is there any financial hardship? Are there reasons why they are not paying for? Are there, um, is there uh, a kind of a resilience to uh, pay, a resistance to pay for this? You also have, based on the emotion and tonal, what, they are, uh, what is being said, whether the customer is going to pay or not. Today, there are models in, in fintechs, in collection agencies, where they decide, is this customer going to be uh, bucketed as a most likely to pay, least likely to pay, or medium likely to pay? And that's based on what the agent is doing or historical data. But here is the data, which is where you've actually live talked to a customer why are customers not using that to determine that? Which is where Unifor comes into play, which feeds the data into the overall analytic solution that, uh, that they may have, an analytic CRM, or whichever one that has. This is fed as an input into that to determine the customer profile and how likely he or she is likely to pay for this. That's the analytics piece. Real time. While the collector is talking to the, uh, to the uh, end customer, based on emotion, based on sentiment, based on what is being said. For example, the person could say that, here is my, I could partially pay. And how does the agent um, act upon that? He or she would typically today go to a knowledge base, figure out what kind of answers needs to be provided for such a response that is coming from the customer. But today, since we are listening and live on the call, we can bring that up, seamlessly let the agent know that this is what he or she is supposed to read out or talk about, whichever way, integrated with your existing knowledge base, knowledge flow, whichever work process that you follow, and that goes to the customer directly. That way there is, first of all, reduction in the overall time, because the agent would put them on hold, would go look at some data, will talk to a supervisor. Multiple things are done during this conversations, right? All of those are erased real time because you now know what is being said and how it is being said. And finally, the virtual agents. Where do you deploy virtual agents, right? Do you do that in the early collection phase, mid, uh, or, or, or late collections? Again, as a part of strategy, you kind of, uh, where T minus 30, T minus, I'm sorry, T minus 15, T minus 10, you start using bots, and then as the day gets nearby, you start using humans. Now what that does is, again, um, getting an entire collection flow done on a bot, simply not possible, simply not done. Very rarely 100% of that is getting done. But today, because of our acquisition of another organization called Jakarta almost 24 months ago, you now get a visual IVR on your mobile that takes you to a payment page to get it completely done as of today without them going to an agent at all or still being in the call. A lot of time what happens is the person will say, I'll pay for this, but then ends up going to an SMS that's sent, clicks on the SMS, they may go to a web page, they may have questions on that, they may not know how to answer, but because you now have a visual IVR in with you, that kind of guides the uh, customer through the entire workflow on what needs to happen. So that's your virtual agent. So again, these are the different use cases for each of our products across each of the work uh, use cases that we have in collections. Now what do you, uh, as I said, I want to touch uh, again the core strength of Unifor is on the agent solutions, even as we have the IVA, the bot side of it, which will do the simpler calling. The critical part of it is the analyze and the assist, which is the agent solutions. A lot of time humans are the ones that are collecting this money and uh, these are the ones that need to be guided for you to, uh, for, for this to be an effective process. 
What you see on the U analyze side is the quality. As I said, the easiest part and the most uh, important part of it, right? Is your agent doing what he or she is supposed to do? Not just from a empathy or CSAP perspective, but from a compliance perspective. Is he or she being rude? Is he or she being, um, I, I don't know, uh, hooliganistic in some of these cases, right? How do you prevent some of these things? You can't be listening into 100% of the calls to figure out how this works. You analyze does that for you. It kind of says that here is your best collector from an agent perspective, the medium one, the low one, and what is each one of them doing that is making them better or not. That is your you analyze piece of it. On the agent side, the same you analyze on the customer side, like I talked about, talks about competitive insights, gives you cross sell, upsell opportunity. Not necessarily a collections use case, but gives you competitive uh, analysis as well as cross sell, upsell. If they are looking for some other kind of a loan while they are uh, doing something else, here's an opportunity for you to cross sell and upsell. You do an entire propensity modeling. Uh, Sorry, can you guys? Okay, yeah, you can do an entire propensity modeling based on this. Like I said, P2P, uh, propensity to cross sell, upsell, uh, ACP2 analysis, uh, uh, FCR, which is first call resolution. All of that can be done on your you analyze on the interaction analytics side. And finally, on the U assist, as I talked about, both from an in call as well as from an after call perspective, the entire workflow of an agent can be automated as well as coaching done for your collection agent as well as your sales agents in certain cases during the call itself rather than after the fact you go and analyze it. That's part of all that we do. And finally, I just want to show you a couple of slides and more than happy to uh, walk through this solution with you if you guys have a chance to come to our booth at all. This is how you typically have the collection insights in an analyze which talks about what is the compliance to regulation side of it, what is the effectiveness of a collector from a collections perspective, and finally the customer sentiment itself, how good or bad it was based on what they're doing. I'm just going to play out a couple of scenarios. This is on our self-serve IVR. Unfortunately, I can't play an agent-to-agent calling at this point in time because obviously we don't have two people here. And more than happy to demonstrate that for you if you visit our uh, visit our booth. But here it is: demo collection collections use case. How does a self-serve deal with? couple of these scenarios, right? These are self-explanatory. Let's talk about a customer is already paid and a collector is calling in. How does the bot react to it? Namaste, I am Unifor Finance. We are trying to make some days to compare with you. Can I talk about the loan EMI? Yes, say it. Yes, say it. I am going to tell you to call this question. कि आपका लोन ईएमआई बाउंस हो चुका है अब आपका ड्यू अमाउंट पैंतीस हजार रूपए है क्या आप आज पेमेंट करना चाहेंगे मैं तो ऑलरेडी पे कर चुका हूँ ठीक है लेकिन आपका पेमेंट हमारे सिस्टम में अभी तक रिकॉर्ड नहीं हुआ है क्या आप बता सकते हैं कि आपने पेमेंट कैसे किया है मैंने यूपे के थ्रू पे किया था है मैं दोबारा अपने सिस्टम में चेक करूंगी जानकारी देने के लिए धन्यवाद आपका दिन शुभ हो कस्टमर ऑलरेडी पेड हाउ डस ही रिया The second one is agreed and agrees to pay it at that point in time. How does the bot react in that case? Namaste, मैं यूनिफॉर्म फिनांस से दीप्ति बात कर रही हूँ क्या यह सही समय है मिस्टर अरविंद लोन ई एम आई के बारे में बात करने का जी हाँ बोलिए मैंने आपको ये बताने के लिए कॉल किया है कि आपका लोन ईएमआई बाउंस हो चुका है अब आपका ड्यू अमाउंट पैंतीस हजार रूपए है क्या आप आज पेमेंट करना चाहेंगे बेशक क्या आप ऑनलाइन पेमेंट करना चाहेंगे जी जरूर क्या आप ऑनलाइन पेमेंट करना चाहेंगे जरूर कृपया एसएमएस पर भेजे गए लिंक के द्वारा ऑनलाइन पेमेंट करें धन्यवाद आपका दिन शुभ हो दैट्स व्हेन ही एग्रीज टू पे पर लेट्स टॉक अबाउट अ केस वेयर दे डोंट एग्री टू पे हियर नॉट नेसेसरीली ड्यू टू देयर मैं यूनिफॉर्म फिनांस से दीप्ति बात कर रही हूं 
क्या यह सही समय है मिस्टर अरविंद लोन ई के बारे में बात करने का आप क्यों नहीं मैंने आपको ये बताने के लिए कॉल किया है कि आपका लोन ई बाउंस हो चुका है अब आपका ड्यू अमाउंट पैंतीस हजार रूपए है क्या आप आज पेमेंट करना चाहेंगे बिल्कुल नहीं क्या आप मुझे आज पेमेंट ना करने का कारण बना सकते हैं मेरा इंटरनेट नहीं चल रहा है जी ठीक है पर मैं आपको बताना चाहूंगी कि ई के लेट पेमेंट से या ना भरने से आपको पेनल्टी चार्ज लग सकती है कृपया अगले पांच दिन में कोई तारीख बताएं जब आप पे कर पाएंगे मैं दो दिनों के बाद पे कर दूंगा धन्यवाद आपका दिन शुभ हो One thing I want you, I don't know if you guys noticed the subtlety on that. There was a bit of sarcasm on the customer side when, the, when he said, "Bilkul nahi" on that. The bot was able to still react to some part of it and move forward with the call. So, as I said, tone is equally important rather than just what is being said at this point in time. And finally, the partial pay uh, on 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 the customer side as well. Namaste. I am Uniform Finance Se Deepi. Baat kar rahi hu. क्या यह सही समय है मिस्टर अरविंद लोन ई के बारे में बात करने का हाँ जी बोलिए मैंने आपको ये बताने के लिए कॉल किया है कि आपका लोन ई बाउंस हो चुका है अब आपका ड्यू अमाउंट पैंतीस हजार रूपए है क्या आप आज पेमेंट करना चाहेंगे जी नहीं क्या आप मुझे आज पेमेंट ना करने का कारण बना सकते हैं मुझे सैलरी नहीं मिली अभी हम उम्मीद करते हैं कि आपकी स्थिति जल्द ही बेहतर हो जाएगी लेकिन मैं आपको बताना चाहूंगी कि ई ना देने से आपको पेनल्टी चार्ज लग सकती है क्या आप पेमेंट का कुछ हिस्सा आज दे पाएंगे जी हाँ अच्छी बात है क्या मैं जान सकती हूँ कि आप आज कितना अमाउंट पे करेंगे मैं बीस परसेंट पे कर दूंगा है ऑनलाइन पेमेंट करने के लिए एस पर भेजे गए लिंक का इस्तेमाल करें या फिर पेमेंट के लिए हमारी फीस टीम आपको संपर्क करेगी धन्यवाद आपका दिन शुभ हो so those are the different scenarios that we have from a from a bot perspective as you can see local language english in this case hindi plus english we of course have multiple languages locally supported as well as global uh, close to almost 30 40 languages globally supported as well more than happy to talk through with you all the details what we have as a differentiator also is we are a tech company obviously we are right but what we have also been able to do is convert that into what's called a time to value time to sell package which is what we call TTV, which is how do you take a flow that is there and automate it within a week, two weeks? You don't want this to be a six-month project. Nobody has the time for that, and that's where we have these vertical-based TTV time-to-value packages, which is what you see here for specifically for collections, where these are the intents, these are the use cases that are already built into the bot, which means that and and you all know that majority of 80% of any of your calls are going to fall under this anyways so this quickly gives us the time to value and quickly deploy it for your organization <coughs> that that was mine any questions i'm happy to take it here or more than happy to do it later as well first one and they just get bored and disconnect right? or right or whatever 
the bot is intelligent enough that it will call you where it has left off and go dial the second question. So it will not ask you the first question, it's already done. Similarly, in the collection state, it will be stateful. What I mean by stateful is, it will know where the conversation has been left. More importantly, not just on the bot side, on the agent side, there is also what is called, while the agent is talking to the customer. See, as I said, we have the platform approach. This is what an agent does, is what the bot will also be, right? What I mean by that is, in an agent talking to a customer, let's say that there's a P2P, how does the agent call back again, right? To do whether you have done it, uh, you said you will pay in three days, I'm calling you for that. In some sense, what's called assurance, that they've given us an assurance that they're doing it again. The same thing the bot will do. It will, leave, it will start off from where it left, it will not go through the entire process. Now your CRM also needs to be updated accordingly because uh, the bot, there could be multiple channels by which the person could have come and paid already. They may have said I'll pay in three days, but they could have done it in day one or day two as well. So the bot also will check with the CRM. It is not just going to be stateful. It's just not going to do based on its own state, but it will check with the CRM as well to make sure it has not been done before it goes and makes the call. Do we have a use case of a follow-up call also? Uh, yes, I can talk to you about that. Yeah. Sure, thanks.